Good evening and welcome to Locked In Stitches. As always, my name is Julie Hall and I'm just going to find our stream for this evening so that I can come in and join you. So, how's everybody's day been? Hope you are all doing well. And wouldn't you know it, I cannot find it anywhere here. So once again, I'm trying a new system. And I think that that is what is stuffing me around. And the goal is that it will allow me to cast simultaneously between um, between Facebook and um, between Facebook and YouTube at the same time. So let me just come through here again and I'll see if that's going to do it for us. Aha! And that seems to have done it. Okay. So now I am connected there. So I can come through and hopefully you will all be able to see me. Good evening everybody. Hope you're all having a great day. As always my name is Julie Hall. Okay, it is a miserable old week here. Um, the weather has been really, really iffy the entire time. And, um, but on the upside, that has been a great thing for my changing around my room and for my being having time to stitch. So I just wanted to show you a couple of things. I've now got my wall of honour on the back here where you can see I've got all of the um, bag projects that I've been putting together as well as the new boutique quilt that I'm working on. Um, you can see my 550 is up there on a riser at the moment which means I can just go over and stand in front of it which makes it just so so much simpler um, and I've got my no it's not going to let me do that I've got my Christmas um, quilt there as well so come on in say hello if you get a chance sorry I can just see my husband there I think he's off to collect our son from school. Oh, sorry, not from school, from work. Okay, so we are going to look at Rock the Casbah tonight. And we are up to month 11. And I've joined two of my blocks. And I'm looking forward to then being able to pop this fourth block um, after we've stitched it into that collection and that will um, then make that block finished. Here's the completed block that I'd done on Tuesday morning which was the block 25. Um, and once again the colours are just coming up beautifully. I'm loving how that all went. Now I was starting to get a little worried about running out of fabric this week. So as part of my um, my cleanup, I came through and I pre cut all of my embroidered felts, I've pre cut all of my waddings, and I've pre cut all of my main fabric and backings. So they are all ready to go. The other thing that I've done to get ready to go tonight, and good evening, Gail, good to see you here. Um, so the other thing that I've done to get ready for this evening is as well as putting my poly mesh in the hoop I've come through and I've used T-pins just to make sure that that hoop is as secure as 
possible. And I'm going to come through over to the machine and uh, Jashonka, thank you for coming in. Good evening to you as well. Okay. So I can pop my hoop onto the machine um, and I've got my wash away thread already threaded. So I'm going to come through and what have I done there? Just to give it enough time. So the first thing I'm going to do is stitch out the outline. Now normally I would stitch that down with the embroiderer's felt on it, but because I've already cut the embroiderer's felt, I'm going to come through. Sorry, I was just looking at a comment there. Good evening, Michelle. Lovely to have you with us. And lay down my embroiderer's felt into that square and then take my main fabric and lay it over before doing colourway 2. Now this is one of the easier blocks in the collection. We've only got um, 13 colours in this and of course we all know that five of those are in the either lay down or, um, or quilting. go for the colour that I know is going to be the first decorative colour that I will use which for me is my nice bright yellow and one of the things that I am loving about having cleaned up my workspace is that I actually found another spool of both the yellow and the um, orange thread. So. We're going to start on our applique. So good to have you here. Um, Michelle, I hope you're having a lovely holiday. And then I can come through. that off to trim just because I know um, because this is of course the fourth block in this one that we then join together but I do know what a pain in the neck it is to trim this one up because there's all these teeny tiny little bits as always, I am keeping the hoop as flat as possible. And there's actually only two applique pieces here as well. 
So this really is one of the faster looks that we do. And Lynn Dixon, good evening. I hope you're doing well, my dear. And hello to Jack as well, who I know loves watching me. Actually, truth be honest, Jack actually loves watching to, um, um, to see how many times I say um, which as you probably know, is a lot. I do love how this pink looks on the grey. So as part of my cleanup over the past week or so, I started categorising all of my fabrics into sort of scraps for applique, fat quarter size or larger than fat quarter size. And I've got a big 100 litre black tub of each of those. Oh, and one for specialty fabrics as well. So M's today had to go, um, the textile teacher suggested with school getting ready to start back, that as a project, the kids make a um, mask. So M's and I spent the day making masks. I did three for Cameron and he's wearing his to work at the moment. I've done one for Edward, whose was an absolute pain in the neck. Um, and this was when I did Edward's, because Edward has a beard. And when I did Ed's, it... Um, he's got quite a broad face and the beard makes it even more difficult because it adds extra bulk. So we sort of tested Cameron's and then I had to add to it. But hopefully I've created one that will work and I got rid of some Star Wars fabric. And then this afternoon in my, um, while I was going through things, I found another a couple of superhero fabrics. So Edward will be going back to work with Captain America, Star Wars, and a Dalek. But I had to come through and add in an inch along the, um, the length of the face, and then two inches, so an inch on each side, across the breadth. And um, it, was, it was really interesting trying to work out what was the best size to get for him. If you missed it this afternoon, you can still go into the Great International Craft Show and watch our video on the towel. And as part of the video, you actually get a code to get this design as a freebie. Ooh, Lynn's making apple and rhubarb, yummo. Might have to get Ed to get some apples this week. Now, did any of see any of you see my stuff up that I've done this week? I'll show you.
and it was today as I was doing my stitching I put the blocks together not well and the worst thing was the arrogance or self-delusion that I had it wasn't until I trimmed it at the back that I even checked so then I've had to pull it apart and rejoin it again um, but I wanted to post it just because I think it's so easy to have happen my noise off here sorry guys okay now can everyone still hear me I am hoping okay and I can see I've got um Majir Loco Loco hello and thank you for joining us we appreciate you um, coming in and saying hello. Okay. And I can see we've got Carmel Billings as well. Thank you for joining us. So my Rock the Casbah is coming along um, beautifully so far and we only have another two months. Um, I am thinking that this weekend for anybody who's around um, and I realise that with so many coming out of lockdown you might have better things to do um, but I might pop up a quick live and do a bit of a stitch along for anybody who wants of course um, just doing some catch-up blocks and what I'm thinking of doing because I actually and it's you know it's really really easy for me I don't have any um, any catching up to do. I have to keep up because I'm showing you guys. But what I might do is I'm thinking of turning some of these blocks into a handbag. As you know, we're looking at doing a handbag club, for lack of a better term, a bag of the month club next year. Um, and I could see some of these designs just being such a beautiful way to do that. So I might start stitching some of those and if anyone's interested I will of course pop it up beforehand. Okay. I'm just loving how these guys are coming together. Stacy, good evening. Lovely to see you. I hope you're doing well. Have you been doing any embroidery, Stacy? Stacy got her first embroidery machine at the. Actually, it might be your second embroidery machine. I think your sister had given you one before that. Um, at the end of last year, and was just going great guns the last time I saw her.
all good. You have been doing embroidery. What have you been embroidering, Stace? We love inspiration. The other one that I was thinking might have to be a Saturday stitch along was the um, the notebook cover. I was thinking of doing a couple of notebook covers for um, for Christmas presents and thought if there's anybody out there who wants to join me, we might do a bit of a stitch along and do some notebook covers. One day. So, as you know, I'm in the ACT. We are allegedly getting out of lockdown at midnight tonight. Whether or not that actually happens is yet to be seen. And quite honestly, not that it affects my life. Um, at the most, the girls um, probably need new underwear and I've suggested that they take each other shopping and help each other by, you know, one being in the waiting in the change room, the other one going and getting different sizes. Okay, now I do see there's some questions there. So let me just get the next colour started and then I will answer some questions. What I love is that I've now got enough blocks that I can see exactly how um, wide and long the quilt's gonna be. So tomorrow I will have, and the reason that I've got the 500 or the 550 up there on its pedestal, and I'll show you that again in a second, because it's a kind of a cool idea. You know, self-praise and all that crap. Um, so, you can see here that I've got the 550 um, up on a sit-stand table. And it's a really strong sit-stand stand table. It takes up to 25 kilos. And that machine weighs 20, I think. Whereas the larger machine weighs more than 25. So it's perfect to have there. And then I can just walk up to it when I need um, to change threads and things like that. But I don't have to be sitting down to thread it or anything like that. So loving working with that. Ooh, Stace has been doing pouches and coffee carriers and notebooks. Yay! Um, and Jashanka's asking, uh, will we be doing any cut work demos? That's a, that's a brilliant one. Um, we will definitely try and do a cut work um, in the... If not by the end of the year, we'll definitely try and do it for um, for next week. Uh, sorry, for, for next year. Um, and cut work is such a fun one to be able to do. Michelle Reynolds, absolutely. You've been holidaying so much, you've got a massive catch-up to do. But it's a wonderful problem to have, Michelle. I'll have to take a photo at some stage and just show you what goes on in front of me while I'm doing my, um, my live casts because I've got one, two, three, four versions of exactly the same thing going, but at different speeds going on here. I can see, um, I run two monitors at once because it's a way better way to work, for me anyway. And I've got the YouTube cast showing on one of them. I've got the Facebook, um, I've got the live cast 
um, that is like 30 seconds ahead on my main screen and then on my tablet is the Facebook cast um, and it's so it's it's like I'm in stereo it's kind of a little bit freaky And the colours are popping really well. I can remember when I'd chosen to do the dark, I was really worried about how these colours were going to work on a dark background. Um, but I'm really happy with the way they've come through. Oh, brilliant idea, Michelle. It's worth setting the borders up. Like, if you've, if you've got... And there are a few of us who have more than one machine. You know, we are megalomaniacs here. And being able to sort of have one machine that's doing something that a little more continuous is fantastic. Oh, see, that's just a show off. Five days five days to go then home for 23 days oh man then off to a retreat and then early beach oh how lovely and I checked today 72 days until Christmas Now, I know a lot of people in our group are grandparents. Um, and if you guys are anything like my parents are slash were, there is nothing more joyous than um, seeing your children being hit with the same problems as they caused you when they were the children. Well, this week, we found out that one of our daughters has not been attending her live classes um, at school. And the worst thing was the teacher who had to tell us or who told us was the textiles teacher. It's one of those I was rather embarrassed. <laughs> and then on top of that, um, so yes, she's been lying about that for the past two months. Um, and um, so it's been a it's been a very fun time in the whole house this week. So we've taken her devices off her, and what that has meant is that she now spends the entire evening in the lounge room with her father and I, and it's it's lovely having her there to talk to us. My God, can the gal talk? Uh, <laughs> and she was complaining that she's finished her books. Um, and <laughs> telling, trying to get us to return her tablet to her so that she could read a book. Um, but no, 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 her father was smarter than that. He went out to the shed and got a box of sci-fi books that he had when he was a kid and gave them to her. Sorry. Poor girl. <laughs> so we were doing <laughs> that was that was our Tuesday and <laughs> I spoke to my sister who's a teacher, um, just asking whether this is, you know, something that a reasonable number of children are doing at the moment, etc. and so forth. And, um, <laughs> she she said, you think that's bad? I've got teachers who are telling me they're anxious to return to the um, classroom and they want to know if they, even when the kids return to school, if the teachers can work from home. <laughs> and I thought that was one of the funniest things that um, 
that I've heard, I can just imagine a class full of students. And, I mean, I know when I was a student, I was a... I think I was relatively good. There was only one class that I skipped on a regular basis. And the teacher was too daft to take roll call, so I got a great mark, even though I never went to the class. Um, ah, the good old days. Um, but the... Um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have paid attention to a teacher on a, on a television screen. Um, so I really can't imagine that any kid these days would. And I thought that was just brilliant. And it's been interesting this week, as I've worked with the pre-cut blocks, it has been um, like having the the fabric and the wadding and all of that pre, pre-cut, it's actually sort of saved me a couple of trimming steps, so I'm really happy with the way that's worked as well. the actual stitching on the block which leaves only the quilting. Oh Stacy I know the orange on the black is just stunning isn't it? And I just wanted to show that it doesn't have to be the white um the white background you can take it you know a different way. So I've got two new pouches to show you. I'm just going to start the quilting first. Because the quilting's boring, it's all a single colour. Oh, Jashanka, I absolutely agree that the teachers can be effective with Zoom classes. Um, where I think it falls down is if there was a classroom of students and the teacher was virtual, um, without an adult influence, I don't think that would work at all. And of course the other bright side was I found it was quite good to have Edward at home when I discovered this so that we could both talk to her at once. So you know, finding the good in things. Okay, and I'm going to go back to my wash away thread because now I'm going to put on the wadding and the backing fabric and because I've pre-cut this I can actually move the machine forward one colorway so normally normally we would put the wadding on and then trim it away then put the backing on I can do this all in one step now because I've pre-cut it. So all I have to do is lay that down. And 
and then lay the backing fabric down on top of it and then very carefully turn it over so you don't disturb any of that. Take the wash away thread out. And load up my grey thread that I'm using for quilting. While that's working, so pretending that these two blocks are ones that we would join together, I would trim this to the, and I have trimmed it to the one inch, and then what we want to do is, and I'm going to come in closer, so what we want to do is match those white wash away thread seams up. And I hold them together with quilt clips because I find it gives the best squarest hold. And then our first step is to stitch along there. And once we've finished our quilting, I'll trim up the block and I'll show you that one. So coming out tomorrow is the latest in the boutique zip pouches and it's florist gump. Um, so very similar to the larger version. However, what we do is we take away some of that tiny detail which isn't gonna transfer well into a smaller pouch and add in other elements. So this one's got the border collie. Um, the other thing that I do differently on these um, on these pouches and you'll notice in the instructions I keep the fabric going that little bit over so that it all goes into the seam and you don't need that extra row of satin stitching sitting along the bottom there. So that is a new one that will come out tomorrow and then week after that we've got the Fashion Avenue and if you're going to put a chick walking a dog on Fashion Avenue it has to be the Poodle and I do think that that one just looks lovely. Other ones that I did this week so I've been playing around with a case that will hold my stitch eraser and this was my first draft so it's not the total finished item um, but I went and bought some of that really heavy foam that you can cut away into different pieces and what I've done is I've set that there for what I needed it to be and we're going to look at things with this one such as making this pouch any size that you want creating your own I should have brought that up a little bit more um, creating your own piping and how to then secure everything together so that's been what my week was all about have a look how we're doing here. 
Oh, thank you, Pauline. That's lovely. Oh, and I do love the design as well. And I can see Lorraine C is with us on YouTube. Thank you for joining us. Now, one of the traumas of doing the quilting the way that I do it around and through each is that occasionally we do get some jump stitches. Once your quilting is finished, you can just come through and trim those jump stitches away. It's because I try and keep the quilting as close to the edge of the project as I can. So what's everyone up to this weekend? All but our lovely Victorian friends should be out of um, lockdown. I'm still in my self-imposed, trying not to go places that could be diseased, etc. But other than that, I might go and um, go out and find a food truck or something for lunch on Saturday. Pauline, you're off on a sewing retreat. That's fantastic. I can imagine being nervous. I'm, I'd am i probably feel the same way, I must say, yeah. Um, but, oh, what a great opportunity. The only thing 
I dislike about sewing retreats or even sewing classes is taking, packing up my machine and taking it somewhere. Just because of the time it takes to pack the darn thing up. Lorraine Claude's finishing four more boxes. Whoa. talking to somebody this afternoon and I said, you know, I'd go to the opening of an envelope um, if I could at the moment. I just want to be part of the people who get to go out. <laughs> mm. So I loaded my vaccine certificate onto my phone so I can prove that I'm double vaccinated. My father was really worried that he didn't have a copy of his vaccine um, list and I, so my sister and I worked that out for him and when I spoke to him this afternoon, he says, but I'm really disappointed, nobody's asked me for it. He's gone to all this trouble to get his passport. And his main excitement was getting to go back to Costco because it was outside of his 10k limit area. over to the work area. I always forget and wonder why I'm having such trouble getting the hoop off before I realise it's because I've got T-pins everywhere. So the first thing I'm going to do is just get rid of, I like my pink ones better, all of the excess stabiliser. And generally speaking, once you've started, you can just run that those scissors over and they will continue cutting in that straight line. What you do want to make sure is that you don't catch your fabric or your, um, 
or your backing. And then I can press that block and then I just need to grab my rotary cutter and my ruler and I'm going to trim where required so it's actually not even required on that one I didn't make it to an inch there and that's absolutely fine we do have some wiggle room First things first, fool me once, um, shame on you, fool me twice, shame on me. So the first thing I'm going to do is make sure that those parts are in the right place. Hi Dee Dee, good to see you darling, hope you're having a good evening. And then come along and match that up. and generally I like to use the larger of the clips because I can put them on the side here they hold everything together really well and at the same time um, I can keep them on there whilst I am stitching okay so that's that I now need to pop on the correct presser foot the machine with sewing cotton. And then, so the first row of stitching is nice and easy. And I'm just going to come nice and easy, she says. And stitch right along that seam that you've stitched with the wash away thread on the top. from my mistakes this morning then I'm going to open that out and that is looking pretty darn good now this side I have already popped together so what I want to do is just see which way I'm going to be best pulling the depth of that fabric. So on this side it's gone that way. There you go. On this one I'll go in the opposite. And after I've pressed that I want to come through and trim away all bar this top layer. Ah, oh, 
can't see. Sorry, guys. Sorry, Diddy. Okay. So what I've done is I've come through and I've made sure that that joins where I want it to be. And because the fabric is facing this way on that half, I'm going to face it the other way on the other. And then I'm going to come through and trim away all of the excess fabric, leaving just a couple of millimetres. So we're taking all of the bulk out of that seam. Now, we've got a couple of options here. Normally, I would use my double-sided no-heat basting tape. Somebody came to me with the suggestion the other week, though, about using the stained glass bias um, tape or short strips of Visaflex. So I thought I would give it a go. And yeah, look, it works fine. If you've got this in your stash, give it a go. So instead of it just being sticky like the double-sided tape, this one you iron it on, peel off the backing and turn it over, and then iron it on the other side. Christine, good to see you, my darling. I hope you're doing well. Okay. So I can see the glue on that. And then I take it off, fold it over, and press. So six and one, half a dozen of the other, whatever works for you. And I mean, hell, you can actually even hand stitch, which to me is a dirty word, but there are people who um, who don't mind doing that. They're, they're kind of weirdos, but you know. Okay. Now what I have found is that you, I really need to let that set then before... I start the next stage. And the next stage is just going to be to pull those two sides together. Now, I'm going to take my glasses off to get that settled up nicely. And these seams should then lock together just at that join because you've put the bulk to opposite sides. Then I can come through again. And I always check then what I've got 
to see if I need to make any changes or restitching just in case it hasn't worked out. Now remember these white threads were all stitched with wash away so we can dab some water on those and I like to leave that till I've finished the entire quilt and do it all at once but I can now come through press that and this was where I made the stuff up this morning now the trouble that you have is right in the center here starts to get really really bulky so trim as much away as you can Oh, damn it again. I'm so sorry. Oh, dear. <laughs> dear Shankar, I'm so sorry. I just... <laughs> I read your comment, but I read it incorrectly. <laughs> I thought you were saying you weren't impressed. I was going to ask you how you would do it differently. <laughs> Which is absolutely fine. The joy of stitching is that there is more than one way to skin that cat. But then I thought, oh my god, I must have offended her. Okay. Use up that bit. Always poke your tongue out if you're having trouble. And then I can now come through. Fold it under. And we have a finished block. So that is now leaving me only um, one, two, three, only, what is it, seven or eight blocks left to go, um, making these one of four, of course, four, five, six, seven, eight blocks to go. Okay, so that is that block completed now next week let me just find so start thinking about all the scraps of fabric that you have in your stash because we are going to come through We are going to stitch three of the gorgeous Deco Divas. Um, so these ladies, I did them, must be about four or five years ago now, and I still just adore them. I'm an Art Deco person. It's my favourite type of um, furniture and style. Um, I like anything old. That's why I love my husband. Um, it is a great way to use up some of your metallic thread 
um, and you can see that I've put pops of metallic on every single one of these designs. Um, don't think that you've got to do a white background. I've done just as many of these with a black background and sort of golden blonde hair as well. So you really can mix it up and make it your own. Okay, I can see Dee Dee's asking, will you remove the white stitching around the block? So Dee Dee, remember that is the wash away thread. And absolutely, once I've put all of the blocks together, I will go through and um, use a paintbrush and get rid of all of that stitching. I like to leave it there at the moment simply because it is going to help me to join that block to so it's going to help me and gives me the um, the correct stitching line to join this block to the next block okay oh not a problem at all questions are always welcome Okay, so that is um, our blocks so far. As always, I would love to see what you are up to. Please feel free to share that with us. Um, many of you saw me this afternoon and have taken advantage of the free design through the Great International Craft Show classroom. Next week, it is going to be my teaching the sheer genius pouch and we will be giving the design away as a freebie as well um, so if you've been on the fence about um, about joining that one up um, it's and like there are some amazing teachers there Margaret from Logan's Patchwork Pauline's Quilters World Wacky Jackie um, there's card making stuff. There's so so much. Hans Martinelli from um, from Know How Sewing. Um, well worth taking a look at. Okay, so until next time, have a stitching day, guys. Thank you for spending some of your evening with me, and I look forward to seeing you all next week. Bye for now.